Hello my lovelies, welcome back. Welcome to my channel. Here we are uh, getting ready to do the middle of the month love readings. Yes, we are a bit behind. I want to apologize. We're going back to the same routine of the Tarot Lessons 101 every Sunday. <laughs> if they're not uploaded on Sundays, they will be uploaded sometime during the week. Um, it's just that our schedule is very crazy right now. And uh, let me just say, first of all, how are you guys doing, my lovelies? I hope you guys are doing amazing. I hope that this lunar eclipse is treating all of you guys much better than it is me. Um, not on a personal level, but I feel like um, this past couple of days, um, it just seems like everyone is being hit left and right. Um, you know, friends, family members, uh, just dealing with a lot of craziness, a lot of drama um, related to family, related to their partners really it's just a whole mess um so yeah i've been doing a lot of cleansings <laughs> and i'm mexican so i have a big ass family <laughs> um as well as you know uh trying to be there and supporting my friends uh it's just it's been very crazy overwhelming to say the least um and that's not including the spell work and the consultations and the healings that we do throughout uh throughout the day so it's been very hectic and very crazy Anyways, let me tell you guys some cheese, man. So, since this lunar eclipse, I don't know about you guys, but I got people giving me ultimatums left and right on a personal level, um, which to me, it's coming out of left field. Uh, they've always known where I stand in regards to my freedom. I am not someone to give up my freedom very easily unless I genuinely feel the connection and on every level, emotional, physical, and spiritual level. Um, and it's just, uh, it's been wild to see how this eclipse is definitely affecting everyone's psyche. Um, as you guys know, the craziness that's been going on uh, worldwide right now, uh, people doing erratic things, uh, especially people that are not that mentally stable. Um, so let's just uh, try to cruise by um for the next coming six months uh and just remember you know take it take a deep breath and if life is feeling very difficult for you guys just remember that nothing in this life is forever nothing is permanent um so this too shall pass uh see it as a way to challenge your soul uh to challenge yourself on a soul level to grow um that's that's the best way you can uh try to view the situation if you're feeling like things are coming out of left field for you guys uh just you know remind yourself that okay so and don't go giving people ultimatums you guys <laughs> oh my goodness i got you guys if i sat here and told you guys the crazy shit that's been happening the past couple of weeks uh it's pretty crazy um you know married ladies uh, trying to make a move um a few people uh that i have been casually seen uh trying to you know force me uh to commit which is crazy to me um but anyways yeah that's what's going on <laughs> how are you guys doing i hope you guys are doing a little bit better than me if you're having a crazy time comment below let me know i want to know i'm not the only <laughs> one all right let's begin you guys just love ratings for all zodiac signs we're going to start off here with aries sun moon rising and venus spirit guides ancestors and archangels please give us insight allow us to see clearly and concisely what is unfolding for aries sun moon rising venus from now all the way to june 2022 in their love life Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Let's get into it. Aries, you're starting off here with the Empress card, the High Priestess, beautiful energy, and Death, the Rebirth card. Amazing, amazing, amazing. You have the Two of Swords, Partners cards, or Person of Interest, Page of Cups, and the Page of Wands. Okay, so I feel like there's no movement or you're feeling a bit frustrated um, because you feel like they're not completely being honest or transparent with you. Um, 
the beautiful thing in this is with the two of swords it's indicating to me the feeling of they're shutting down right now and the reason why they're shutting down is because they're trying to figure out um, what it is exactly what it is that they want and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that you guys um, now if you've been dealing with this person for example the past five years and you're still inconsistent or there's still nothing official uh, then there's reason for frustration there however um, things that are happening with you right now Aries are to the best of your interest this includes them acting erratic or them acting very distant um, acting like they are or have not been communicating that's quickly going to be changing it's it's almost like it's gonna give a whole 180 um, and the reason for this is again they are trying to align themselves to uh, your energy and the reason I say that is because we have very mundane energy representing the person of your interest so this could be an immature person or this could be a person that is not as evolved or as mature as you however you have the Empress card here with the high priestess and the death card so again we just experienced uh, the lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio what is Scorpio Scorpio is the psyche it is, I should say, the dark psyche. It is all about uh, transformation, transmutation. And transmutation means uh, taking something or uh, a situation, uh, metaphorically speaking, taking a situation and transforming it or transmutating it um, to the positive or to the best of your interest whether you're aware of that or not that's what's happening around you the empress is all about receiving so no contact no communication no reaching out to them aries if you're not hearing from them take a step back and focus on yourself right now why because time is going to reveal to you and not only time but it's going to be in a very quick and sudden uh, change like i said so if you pull away and focus primarily on yourself, you're going to vibrate to the highest of your frequency right now. And that's what Spirit is trying to guide you to do. They're telling you, focus on yourself. The Empress is all about receiving. It's all about not making a move and allowing things to unfold and to fall into place because that's the best of your interest right now. So again, Empress is feminine energy and feminine energy is, again, the receiver, not the one making or taking action. Uh, whereas the emperor would represent for you to take action. So again, if there's no contact or they're not putting effort, bring the energy back to yourself, focus on yourself, uh, focus on doing things for yourself, go out, don't be sitting down, being all bummed out about it, don't do none of that. What they're asking you is to raise your vibration. Uh, High Priestess is all about listening to your inner guidance right now and what your inner guidance is trying to uh, show you or to uh, allow you to understand is that sometimes it's necessary for us to not make a move. Sometimes it's necessary for us to give the other person their space so that they can figure out whatever it is that they need to figure out in their life, but not only that. It gives them or it puts you in a position of value. Why? Because when we give ourselves too much or when we make ourselves too available, it often puts us in a position uh, of weakness because it allows the other person to think that you're always going to be there. Uh, so it puts you in a position of being taken for granted. Whereas if you remove your energy and you become absent, that's when they're able to realize, that's when you give them permission to miss you, permission to think of you, permission to wonder, why isn't Aries reaching out to me? What's what's so interesting in their life? What's going on that they're not um, being the one to reach out or being the one to usually uh, try to make communication? Now with the Two of Swords, yes, they're needing a moment of silence. They're needing a moment to figure out what it is that they want. But with the Page of Cups, they're realizing, they're coming to the realization of their feelings and being pushed forward to make it to, to make movement with the Page of Wands. So they will be reaching out to you, uh, Aries. But again, uh, I really encourage you guys to focus primarily on yourselves right now. Um, right now, use this time to not only work on yourself, but to glow up. 
uh, because I definitely see that happening with the Empress and High Priestess energy here. So again, I hope that this was very clear for you guys. Um, anyways, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that uh, notification bell. All right, let's go now to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. How are you doing, Taurus? Hope you're doing amazing. Hope you're doing much better than me. <laughs> I'm not doing that bad. I can't complain. I'm actually doing pretty amazing. It's just that, you know, family, friends, uh, drama always takes a lot from us. Um, only because obviously we're very close to the situation and it's just the whole craziness going on. Anyways. All right, let's see what's going on with Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Spirit Guides, Ancestors, Archangels. What are the messages for Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance? What can they expect from now all the way to June 2022? Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, your first card here is the Knight of Swords, High Priestess, Three of Cups. We have the Devil card. Three of Pentacles and Eight of Pentacles. All right. So, Taurus, what they're telling you here is there's going to be, and I'm going to be very straightforward with you. I feel like someone is uh, very closely looking at what you're doing or very closely watching you. This could be them watching you through social media. This could be watching... Um, even if friends of yours are uploading things where you're in the video or where you're in a picture, uh, they're definitely looking at uh, your every move. And I feel for a lot of you guys, uh, this is a third party energy. So this could be a person that is dealing with the person that you were dealing with in the past, or this could be a person that uh, the person of your interest may actually be dealing with. Um, Three of Cups always indicates to me third party energy. And because it is in your card's position. It means that they're looking towards what you're doing with the high priestess in a very sneaky manner. So it could be that they are uh, seeing, like I said, viewing your information, your pictures or videos through another friend's account, or they're making fake accounts, trying to add you, trying to be all up in your business, basically. Um, now with the cards of the person of your interest or the person that you're dealing with, we have the devil card. So you may be dealing with Capricorn energy. It is Saturn's energy, it could be an Aquarius as well. Three of Pentacles is coming together or wanting to come together um, in a way or in a sense of trying to work it out. So again, I feel like for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a situation where there was some type of fallout or some type of giving each other some space. I feel that this person hasn't been um, very forthcoming in putting effort or showing you that they're willing to put effort in this connection. Uh, the devil is very, to me, very much a um, selfish type of energy with the three of pentacles though. They are wanting or they will be making a move. They will be taking some type of action uh, in regards to making it work or in regards to can we make it work because we have the eight of pentacles here. So there's definitely a desire of wanting to work through something. I feel like if you're dealing with a situation, like I said, where there hasn't been constant communication, there could be a probability that the person you were interested in or that you are in a relationship with may have been dealing with someone communicating, not on a physical aspect, um, but communicating. And I feel like uh, this is something that they've either tried to like uh, sweep under the rug or... Um, make it to a point of you not knowing that they were talking to someone else. Again, I feel that it's not something uh, whereas you would be, what's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like a feeling of, it's only gone as far as communicating, um, nothing physical. Uh, however, it's not going to be the same for everyone. It is a general reading, but uh, I do have three threes here. I mean, two threes here. So there is definitely a third party energy. If they were pulling away or they weren't communicating, the reason for that was because they were their focus and attention was so, was somewhere else. Um, and the three of cups here is definitely uh, clarifying that. 
Um, and again, like I said, if there is a turnaround or they're starting to reach out or wanting to reach out to you from now all the way to June, don't be surprised that it's because the person that they were talking to or dealing with uh, had an understanding of who you were or they figured out who you were. Um, and, and again, it's almost a feeling of like wanting to sweep it under the rug. Let's pretend I wasn't talking to them. Um, I just needed my space or I just needed some time to breathe. Um, but in reality, it was because they were double dealing. Uh, so if you do hear from your ex and your ex is wanting to come back around, be careful about that because chances are it didn't work out uh, in the other uh or with the other person and that's the reason why they're coming back around and being more enthusiastic about wanting to work it out with you um and not only that but i'm i am gonna be a uh, very blunt and saying that i feel for a lot of you guys if that is your situation uh the person that was or the person of your interest that was dealing with someone else um like that other person made them want you more by constantly bringing you up or by figuring out who you were um, and talking about you or whether it was good or bad, talking smack or whatever. Um, I feel like it made your partner or person of interest want you more. Um, so again, if it is, if you are correlating with this message and from now all the way to June, uh, the person comes back around or tries to communicate or tries to open communication, just uh, be aware of what's going on because I feel like they're trying really hard to not let you know what's been going on in their life all the while they're doing the spine or the person they were messing around with was doing the spine. All right, my lovelies, I hope this gives you clarity. Now let's go to Gemini. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance for the month remaining of May going into June 2022. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Okay, one more shuffle. Thank you. Here we go. All right, Gemini, we have the Five of Cups. We have the Page of Pentacles and the Four of Cups. Seven of Cups, Knight of Cups, and Ten of Cups. Okay, so what they're showing me here, um, Gemini, is that you're currently going through a situation where you're feeling like you're at a loss or you're dealing with the loss of the connection or the relationship. It's almost like trying to hold on to a relationship that's no longer working. Page of Pentacles is indicating it's been a very long um, process for you guys. Uh, it also indicates that you were very, shall I say, quick, um, quick in the sense of jumping to conclusions right away in regards to how you felt about this person or how this person felt about you. It's almost like you were hopeful and you were looking at the relationship or connection through hopeful eyes um, and kind of ignoring or passing through the red flags that they were initially showing from the very beginning. But the Four of Cups does indicate to me you feel like at this point, you are at your wit's end or you are at a point where you're no longer interested and i feel that for a lot of you guys you're not interested in their bullshit. uh reason i say that is their cards is representing seven of cups uh this is a person that is very inconsistent inconsiderate this is a person that um thinks that they have it's kind of like the scenario of thinking you have um or the grass is greener on the other side uh, so this person is constantly juggling or dealing with multiple people at the same time. Knight of Cups does indicate to me very immature energy. It does indicate to me, especially with Seven of Cups there, uh, it's like they promise and promise and promise, but they never deliver. This is the type of person that we would call like a Don Juan, uh, whether it's male or female, it doesn't matter. It's the player type of energy, the player type of vibe, the, the you know, I will promise you uh, to be the best thing you've ever had, or I promise you that I am not like the others, um, or I promise you that I'm going to show you that I care, uh, but often are left uh, dropping the ball. So I feel like at this point, what they're telling you is walk away from this connection. It's not really going anywhere. And the person um, 
themselves are not either emotionally mature or they're not in a state of mind where they're wanting to give you um, a relationship. I feel like they're more capable of giving you the idea of a relationship. Oh, when we're together, uh, it's going to be so great. Oh, when we're finally like good in our lives, when we're stable, it's a person that is ideally romanticizing to you the relationship that could po could uh, possibly be, but it's not actually. And it's not because uh, they can right now. It's just that they choose to. It's kind of like they're very good at selling you a dream. Uh, so what Spirit is telling you is at this point, um, there, there's no point in crying over spilt milk. There's no point in, uh, you know, sitting there reminiscing about the person because I feel like for a lot of you guys, it has more to do with the fantasy of who they were versus who they really were. Um, and again, it's almost like I am selling you the perfect, you know, the, the perfect dream. It's, it's a person that's very a sweet talker or someone that is very, they portray themselves to be very compassionate, very nurturing, very caring. Um, but in reality could be very selfish. Um, and like I said, a person that is just not emotionally ready to settle. All right, my lovelies. Let's go now to Cancer. Let's see what's going on with Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Love and romance from now all the way to June 2022. What are the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Here we go. All right, Cancer, we have the Eight of Wands, the Magician, and Temperance. Beautiful energy, the Hanged Man, Nine of Wands, and Three of Wands. All right. Okay, so you're definitely viewing the relationship or connection like it's um, taking momentum, like it's picking up. Um, for some of you guys, it could be that. It was a very passionate, very intense type of connection. Uh, the magician is here, so it could represent um, the ha having the potential uh, to make this into something long term, having the potential to uh, I, what I'm seeing is you guys were very enthusiastic about this connection from the very beginning. It was very intense, very heavy, very, you know, passionate. You could be dealing with Aries energy or Leo energy, as we do have temperance here. Uh, Sagittarius, sorry, Sag Sagittarian en energy, um, as we do have temperance here as well. However, I feel like because it picked up very quickly, um, you were very quick to either fantasize about the long-term relationship or about the potential of a long-term relationship in this connection. Um, I feel like you weren't careful in really paying attention to what they were bringing to the table. And when I say bringing to the table, I feel like it has more to do with uh, baggage. And I feel that it's baggage on both spectrums. So it's not just them. Um, I feel like you guys were very quick and very, you know, hot and heavy type of energy is what I'm feeling. And at some point there was a feeling of like slowing down or the relationship like progressively becoming more stale. Um, and how they're viewing the situation with the hanged man, they, there was something, some type of revelation or something that recently happened where they were able to see the relationship in a very different perspective and it made them want to halt the relationship. Um, now this could be, like I said, they are speaking to me about bringing heavy baggage or baggage into the relationship. This, this could have been because it is very strong, uh, fiery type of energy here uh, with your cards. It could have been that you guys were extremely intense or that you yourself was extremely intense in the relationship. This could be being needy. This could be um, being overly possessive. Um, and within that intensity, it kind of flared out. Um, and they were starting to see the relationship as, oh, now it's becoming a little bit um disconnected if you remove the passion it's like there's really nothing other than passion in this connection 
And I feel like they ran with that initially, but then there was a moment of realization where they're like, okay, this is something I just don't want to deal with right now because to them, what I'm hearing, it was it's an inconvenience. Whether it's them dealing with your drama from previous relationships or whether this is you not wanting to deal with their drama from past relationships, it just put them in a position of seeing it like, okay, I'm not willing is what I'm hearing. I'm not willing to put the effort, not right now. I'm not willing to continue um, putting effort. And I feel like for a lot of the people, um, if you're connecting with this message, I feel like your partner could have been tempted um, to put their sights on someone else, or they could have potentially uh, been communicating with someone else. Hanged Man is seeing things from a very different perspective. Nine of Wands is no longer wanting to fight, no longer wanting to. Um, it's like throwing in the towel, basically, with the Three of Wands because of expansion, because I want um, or I'm waiting for something to happen. But it is a way, if you can see here in this picture, it's a, like looking into uh, into the future. Whereas they're viewing this connection or this relationship like a, a part of their past. So there is something that they're waiting for. Um, <clears throat> for a lot of you guys, it could be that they were waiting for someone. It could be that they were still not emotionally moved on from a their partner or a person you know from their past a partner that was from their past um because perhaps they were hopeful and a lot of the times in relationships that start off very hot and heavy oftentimes one or the other that is you know pushing that connection uh it's almost like they're kind of pushing themselves to get over someone if that makes sense. And that's the energy I'm sensing. That's the energy I'm feeling. It's almost like you were left like with your head spinning, like this was intense, this was amazing, what the hell happened? Um, and you're being patient about it the whole, the whole time. While they're looking at this from the hanged man's perspective, um, I became enlightened or I became aware um, that I am still guarded, that I'm still wounded from the past. And the three of wands is still hopefulness that they would come back or that they would reach out to them. So I feel like if you're dealing with someone that recently uh, has been progressively pulling away from you, or they could have even gone MIA for a while, I feel that the reason for that is because news could have came to them about someone they're not over. Um, and they're hopeful about that. So it was easier for them to just make it seem like you were too much to deal with or too much to handle. Um, but it's because of their shortcomings and it's because they've realized they haven't moved on from someone from the past. So my advice to this situation, um, Cancer, is to not waste your time like sitting there waiting for someone to choose you if they have to choose between you and someone else it's time for you to walk away uh, no one should ever be put in a position of feeling like they're making a choice between you and someone else and it's not rare it's something that i see all the time um, when people get themselves into a relationship whether it starts off physical or not but it eventually turns into something more steady um, it, because it's physical, uh, once you remove that intensity or that passion that because it's something new, because it's, it's exciting, um, only to come and realize or find out that they still haven't moved on or they're still emotionally attached or invested in someone from the past, there's a hot and cold type of energy. And I feel like if you're dealing with that, um, there's nothing worse than wasted time. Wasted time is worse than wasted money. Um, make yourself a priority know that you deserve better and that you deserve to be treated much more better and much more kindly uh than the way they have been treating you um at this point i feel like there's it's wasted time for you to sit there and wait for them um my advice would be to work on yourself right now and try to figure out um why is it that you're very attracted or very drawn to people that are very fiery 
um, you know, usually when things start hot, hot and heavy, it's like I tell a lot of my clients, it's usually going to flare out. It's usually going to crash and burn very quickly. Not to say that it always happens. Sometimes if there is a soulmate connection uh, or a deeper type of connection, then that definitely intensity amplifies. Um, but it's not something that is uh, very, it's very rare. Um, so again, if the person is actively pursuing you, being very intense, uh, love bombing you, and then all of a sudden they stop, there's a reason for it. And the reason primarily has to do with the fact that if they're, if they're very quick to jump into saying I love you after meeting you for two, three weeks, um, that person is definitely walking around with a red flag um, because it, it takes time in order to nurture something, just like it takes time in order for you to emotionally uh, connect and emotionally become invested in someone. Um, so again, if, if this is correlating with you, um, I would definitely encourage you not to sit there and wait for them. Um, continue on. You deserve to be treated better, my lovelies. All right. Okay, now we're going to go with Leo. Let's see what's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels. What are the messages for Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance? Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What's going on with Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance from now all the way to the month of June 2022? Leo. All right. We have the Hierophant, the Nine of Swords, and the World card. Partner, Person of Interest, Four of Swords, Temperance, and the Knight of Cups. All right. So, <clears throat> Leo. There is beautiful energy that is surrounding you right now. For a lot of you guys, you're experiencing a lot of attention. Uh, you're experiencing being more attracted to people than you usually would um, or that people that are sparking your interest. And the reason for that is because you do have the Hierophant here, which is indicating to me a commitment or high, higher level of commitment, a higher level of um, relationship with the Nine of Swords. There's been a constant fear um, or a feeling of what if that never happens for me? What if that never, um, you know, what if I can never find someone that I can uh, be emotionally invested in and actually see it through? Um, with the Nine of Swords, a lot of fears that you're caring about commitment and relationships has a lot to do with something from your past. For some of you guys, this could be in direct correlation to a long term, the last long term commitment you had. Um, whereas you feel like there could have been more that could have been done in order to salvage that relationship. Uh, it's almost like a guilt or some type of remorse that you're carrying or that you've been feeling. Again, this is nostalgic type of energy for me, and it speaks to me about the residue energy that you're still releasing from an ending cycle. Um, now with the Empress here, again, this is Venusian type of energy. This is feeling more uh, like wanting to be a little bit more into how you present yourself to the world. This could be you uh, getting a haircut. This could be you uh, taking better care of your health. This could be you dyeing your hair a different color, doing your makeup different. I feel like you're aligning yourself to your energy that at some point you kind of forgot or you kind of was just going through the motions whereas there is a revamping of energy that's happening around you right now again i'm going to be honest with you guys i feel like you're going to be able to draw in a lot of people's attention and these are suitors that are definitely um definitely the type that are looking for something long term now with the four of swords here indicating to me some type of time out some type of disconnect for some of you guys there could have been a recent separation if you are dealing with someone um there was a recent separation however they're hopeful that there's going to be some type of rekindling or some type of reconnection 
Knight of Cups is a communication, a communication about I miss you, communication about I love you. Let's give each other an opportunity. Temperance, let's heal. Uh, let's let's try to work it out. Let's try to fix it. Um, and again, with the Empress, this is energy of receiving type of energy. So if you are dealing with a situation where the person that you were in a committed relationship with let you down or hurt you, uh, there was a feeling of the fear of letting go. I feel like the moment you let go is the moment you started to find yourself again. It's the moment that once you let go of those fears of what if I never find um, something long term, uh, almost the feeling of like, if, is this the last person uh, that I have an opportunity to make something happen? And I feel like the more you started to pull away from that fearing energy, the more you started vibrating to your highest frequency, the more you started to become more aligned, the more you started worrying about yourself and making yourself a priority, the more you started to upkeep yourself. And I feel like that sexual energy that is becoming very raised right now is definitely going to be drawing in a lot of more suitors. For those of you guys that have been single for quite a while and haven't had no, you know, fun times, <laughs> uh, nothing uh, exciting in your romantic life, that's quickly going to be changing. Four of Swords indicates to me a person that has been working primarily on healing themselves, which makes them a perfect suit. Why? Because they're coming out of a healing phase where they're now emotionally available to give and receive love. And the Knight of Cups is a person showing up, giving you some type of... Uh, uh, giving you some type of attention, some type of uh, let's go out on a date, some type of uh, definitely vibing with each other or liking each other off the bat. Um, so again, if there hasn't been no excitement in your romantic life, Leo, that's quickly going to be changing. Um, especially what I'm really loving about this energy, Four of Swords to me, the person uh, that you're interested in or that you're dealing with or that's going to be coming in for you guys. Four of Swords is a temporary time uh, to recuperate from something, to, to temperance next to it, to heal from a cycle, to heal from a previous relationship. Um, but they're coming out with the Knight of Cups, which is a love message, an opportunity to connect. This is destiny taking in and bringing or drawing or pushing the air um, <clears throat> pushing the or the air pushing you guys to come together and cross paths right when this person is ready and they're literally looking um to date with purpose so again um and i feel like for a lot of you guys you may be dealing with a person or <clears throat> for those of you guys that are not used to dealing with people that are tattooed or that have tattoos i feel like this person that's coming on or that's coming towards you maybe not your usual type or maybe not the type you usually go for um specifically for some of you guys uh this person could have some type of ink on them um some type of tattoos or they could just have like some type of marking in one of their arms like some type of um uh this this could be like a what is it called like a birthmark or something like that uh, but i feel very strongly like it is some type of tattoo uh, especially those of you guys that are that's not your usual type um so yeah beautiful energy you guys all right we're gonna go now to virgo okay virgo let's see what is unfolding for you guys for this month remaining of May, beginning of June 2022. Spirit gets what are the messages for Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with you guys. Oh, okay. Here we go. One more shuffle. Thank you, Spirit. All right, here we go. Your first card here is the Six of Cups, Seven of Swords, and Four of Cups. Partner, Person of Interest, Three of Cups, the Six of Pentacles, and the King of Cups. Okay, so Virgo, I feel like a lot of you guys are experiencing a lot of uh, uncertainty in regards to the connection or in regards to the person that you may be dealing with. There is a lot of inconsistencies here. And I feel like on your part, you're viewing the situation as something that you can't really come back from or you can't really... Um, continue to 
look to the other way. So what I mean by that is the red flags, uh, the difficulty, uh, the inconsistencies. It's like at some point you were overlooking them or ignoring them. And at this point, um, I feel like it's, it's plain to see. Um, keep in mind, you guys, that the Scorpio energy of the lunar eclipse we just experienced is still influencing us. Um, so there are a lot of revelations. And I feel like for some of you guys, you may actually be going through this right now. Um, you may be experiencing things that perhaps uh, in the past your partner or person of interest could have done or something that they were trying to be sneaky about or not completely um, honest and straightforward about. I feel like things are coming out. Um, it's a lot of things that were kind of like... Uh, swept under the rug in the past that is coming back around and yes this can actually include people from the past that were sneaky people in the past that perhaps were double dealing or that were talking to you and someone else they may start to pop up um, for the remaining of may beginning of june um, and what they're telling you here this is uh, energy that you've outgrown already virgo um, don't fall for the inconsistencies or if in the past something didn't work out and out of nowhere they're popping back up again and you know for a fact that this person was sneaky that they were full of shit um don't entertain that because i feel like there may be a slow in progress if you continue to entertain things that you've already outgrown that you should no longer be dealing with or that you should no longer be okay with that type of treatment towards you. Now, the cards that are representing the partner person of inter interest is the Three of Cups, Six of Pentacles, um, and King of Cups. This is a person that could be overly emotional in the sense of uh, love bombing. This could be a person that in the very initial or beginning of the connection, um, they kind of went above and beyond to express how much they care for you, to express that they've never felt this before, how strong the connection is. This is just a person that has had a lot of experience in knowing how to sweet talk a person or how to sell them um, this perfect dream or this illusion of who they are. Um, this is a person that, again, if you feel like lately your partner hasn't been completely honest or straightforward, there's a lot of sneaky behavior going on. Um, be mindful of that because this also, um, you're being led to understand a little bit more your emotional uh, GPS navigation, so to speak. Um, if it doesn't, if it's not sitting right with you or if it's not feeling right, um, listen to that listen to that little voice um, because uh, from what they're telling you here is again the red flags or the ignoring or uh, if they're telling you you know they went out with a friend um, and it turns out that that friend was with their girlfriend for example or inconsistencies in their stories and it's just not sitting well with you know that without a doubt that's your intuition and it is sparking and sounding the alarm um, so pay attention to that three of cups with the six of pentacles. The person is entertaining other possibilities, other options. Um, they are in this cycle of constant, um, uh, their focus or energy being constantly redirected. Um, and again, with the king of cups here underneath, um, a person that could be, I'm sensing uh, the King of Cups in the reverse position. So it indicates to me a person that could be manipulative or a person that um, can show like overly, you know, oh, I love you, I care for you within knowing them like two or three weeks. Um, th there is a bit of inconsistency there and it's only because they're very good at portraying themselves a certain way. Um, but I feel like you already know this, Virgo, so what they're telling you here is, again, if this is a recurring cycle, you need to bring an end to that. You need to bring uh, a stop to that and uh, stop allowing people uh, to play you for a fool. You're, I know you're very smart. I know that you guys are, um, you know, if the story's just not adding up, you guys will continuously overthink. Um, but it's about taking action and letting them know 
that it's not okay for this type of treatment or for them to continue giving you hot and cold type of energy. All right, my lovelies. All right, let's go now to Libra. Let's see what's going on here with Libra. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance for the month of May going into June 2022. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on in your love life, what you can expect. Okay, here we go. Your first card here is the Four of Swords, King of Swords, and High Priestess. Person of Interest, Ten of Wands, the Chariot, and Temperance. Okay. So for some of you guys, you may be dealing with a disconnect or some type of distancing, or perhaps you're not in contact right now um, with your partner or person of interest. They are telling you right now it is very important, Libra, um, to lead your actions with your with what your mind is telling you, not so much what your heart is telling you. I feel like for some of you guys in the past, you've had uh, or you've made decisions or you've allowed um, certain behaviors from your partner or person of interest um, because you were being led with your heart. Um, right now, what they're telling you is to vibrate uh, to the energy of the King of Swords. Obviously, this is your energy. Um, but because you are Libra and Venusian energy, uh, King of Swords reminds me a little bit more of uh, Aquarian energy uh, or Gemini energy, uh, being able to step back and see the whole picture or to try to analyze um, versus try to feel your way into what's going on. Um, what they're telling you here right now, there is a need to approach some type of embracing of a distancing. So again, if you've been experiencing uh, separation or no contact, um, what they're telling you right now is to focus on yourself and to focus all that love and all that energy towards yourself for self-growth and self-improvement. Uh, that is most important for you right now. Um, now, the way the partner or person of interest is dealing with the situation, 10 of wands to me indicates being overburdened feeling like uh, they were trying to be caged in. Uh, obviously, this person has a bit of commitment issues here with the Ten of Wands and Seven, uh, sorry, and the Chariot, which indicates to me the moment things get difficult or the moment things get serious, they're very quick to run away from the situation or they're very quick to push you away um, only because they're afraid of letting go of their freedom. They're scared in, in essence there is fear of losing their identity when it comes to relationships so if we want to take it a little bit deeper um, because we do have temperance here this can indicate to me a person that has um, childhood trauma when it comes to partnerships or relationships or how they were raised to understand what a relationship is um, so they could have had a uh, parent, whether it was the paternal or the mother figure, um, that could have been extremely possessive, extremely um, jealous, extremely like trying to cage in their partner. Uh, so they're viewing the situation again when things get difficult or when it becomes a little bit more um, having to deal with, you know, what everyone goes through in relationships that either break or make the relationship, I feel that they're very quick to either push people away or walk away from that connection. Um, so again, there is a need for them to deal with healing, um, but also with dealing with the fact of what they are wanting versus what they're needing at this point. And if you want me to be honest with you, Libra, if this is something you've been dealing with for a while, uh, again, the lunar eclipse that we just experienced may be revealing to you a lot of hidden things uh, that they weren't being very overly open or um, <clears throat> wanting to express that you may they may find themselves um, trying to communicate that they're stressed, that they're not uh, reaching out or they're not contacting you or they're not hanging out with you because they just have a lot of things going on. And in reality, um, 
yes, they do have a lot of things going on, but it has more to do with internalizing what they're feeling and what it is that essentially they want out of this connection. I feel for the majority though, um, it is speaking about if there has not been no contact or anything, you will be hearing from them. Um, but again, I fear that it may not be consistent and it could be uh, potentially because they themselves are very unclear about what they want right now. All right, my lovelies. All right, now let's go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Now for you singles out there, I will be uploading a video for the month of June in regards to love and romance. Those of you guys that are completely single and have nothing exciting going on with your love life um, so that we can look a little bit deeper into uh, the blockages and what's coming towards you. Okay, so you guys stay tuned for that. All right, let's see Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Let's see what's going on with your love life in regards to love and romance. The remaining of May, beginning of June 2022. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. All right, here we go. Your first card here is the Four of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the Three of Wands. Partners cards, the Star, the Empress, and Justice. Wow beautiful energy here, Scorpio. All right. So for those of you guys that have been wanting or desiring, um, or really putting a lot of effort and energy towards trying to manifest something long-term or some type of higher level commitment, uh, or even those of you guys that have been seeing or dating, uh, this person for quite a while, uh, there is definitely an alignment that's happening right now. Synchronicities that are happening for those of you guys that are single out there. Um, keep in mind, they are telling or signaling that there are going to be a lot of synchronicities that are happening right now for you guys. So if a relationship or a long-term commitment is something that you're trying to bring towards your life, now is the moment to start doing manifestations or visualizations or love spell work to bring love towards you. Um, because I definitely do see, again, like I said, alignment. This is synchronicities. This is paths uh, or uh, two people's paths crossing um to basically uh, basically the universe bringing you guys together in alignment four of wands is speaking about you thinking or wanting or desiring some type of stable uh relationship or higher level of commitment page of wands is being excited um passion uh this is communication um but more than anything it speaks to me about being ignited or having uh, experiencing uh, a moment in time of intense passion or like when someone sparks your interest uh, that you're very, uh, very much into, you know, putting yourself out there, being excited about the future. Um, so definitely very beautiful energy. Right now, the best advice I can give you guys, Scorpios, if again, primarily those of you guys that are completely single right now, put yourself out there. Um, because again, like I said, synchronicities and uh, alignment is happening for you guys. So um, do not be surprised if by now or the from now all the way to, I want to say the end of July, uh, you guys go from being single to actually being in a relationship within that time frame. Um, three of wands is that, of, you know, you've been patient. It's been a, a process. Um, but you're still hopeful. Um, the partner or person of your interest has the star. They're viewing you as everything they hoped for or everything they wish for. The Empress is the highest level uh, of, you know, for a person to see you. Um, seeing you as the Empress is a representation of everything that is love. Um, but this can also represent to them you represent or you are... Uh, in every extension of the word, the woman or the man that they've always looked for or wish to have. Um, so again, it's very loving energy. It's almost like they've been praying for you. So again, I am getting very direct message for those of you guys that have been working on manifesting love or bringing love towards you. Um, or if you've been focusing on manifesting love and right now you're actually dealing with a recent connection, um, chances are that this connection is both of you guys, uh, both of you have manifested each other um, because the star card is illumination, um, but it is also, you know, 
our spirits, our guides, uh, lighting the way for us to guide us towards this feeling of emotional abundance um, with the Empress card here. And Justice is talking about um, not only um, not only karma and, and not necessarily in a negative way, it is good karma. It is a representation of balance. It is your equal. It is they see you as their equal or the, or the person that they've been hoping and wanting. Uh, so the, for those of you guys that are in a relationship, I do see a, a deepening of a connection, especially those of you guys that have been dealing with the person that has had difficulty becoming emotionally available. Uh, maybe for some of you, this person could have potentially in the beginning of the relationship have mentioned that they weren't ready necessarily for something long term. Do not be surprised from now all the way to, like I said, uh, the month of July, there is this information that comes through for you where they express um, future plans or they express that they are wanting to take it to the next level. Um, again, it's like a perfect balance and perfect synchronicity when it comes to your love life. And those of you guys that haven't experienced anything exciting as of yet, do not despair. Um, they are definitely guiding your way. And again, I feel like there's going to be a lot of synchronicities happening for a lot of you guys. If you're being asked or if you're being invited to show uh, to social outings or gatherings or even a specific wedding coming up, definitely go. Don't hesitate about going and putting yourself out there because I feel like um, the cosmos is currently influencing uh, that alignment and that manifestation that you've been trying to manifest. And point to note, they've also been trying to manifest you, okay? So very powerful message here for you guys. All right, my lovelies, now let's go to Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sagis. All right, love life. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Please show us what is unfolding for them. What can they expect from now? Oh. You have a card that fell. Give me one second, you guys. Okay, you guys, the card that fell out is the Eight of Swords, as you guys can see here. Eight of Swords is indicative to me of um, being stuck or being in a situation where you feel like there's not a lot of movement that's happening, but this is more to do with mental slavery. What I mean by that is you are the creator of and manifester of the blockages based off of your fears or based off of the one thing you fear the most in regards to this connection. Um, you have the Ace of Cups here. So I am very, very, okay. So I'm gonna get really deep into this, <laughs> into these messages um, only because, okay, so you've been dealing with a situation, Sagittarius, where you've been stuck for some of you guys you've been dealing with a partner or a relationship that has been extremely karmic for you um karmic indicating not good karma um but from p previous past lives where it's been very difficult for yourself you have found it very difficult for yourself to release yourself from that relationship whether it's because there's children involved whether it's because it's toxic you break up, you go back, you break up, you go back. Um, but in, in the grander scale of things, the reason why it's been very difficult for you to release yourself from this is because for a lot of you guys, you have doubted or felt like you weren't worthy of love. And this is not something recent, you guys. This is something I've been seeing for a while for Sagittarians. Um, uh, where they find themselves in very toxic relationships or they've pulled away from relationships, find themselves in a new, uh, much more healthier relationship and they're constantly questioning and doubting that connection only because they're not used to elevated type of relationships. So what I mean by that is healthy relationships. So there has been a major shift that's happening here. Why we have the Ace of Cups with the Two of Cups. So for some of you guys, if you still are dealing um, with a toxic connection, you're going to be pushed, and I'm talking about universally, universal-wise, um, collectively. There is a shift that's happening where 
you're going to come at the forefront of having to accept and having to deal with the fact that this relationship has kept you down, has kept you in the gutter, or has kept you from progressing in a positive way. Once that realization happens, and for some of you guys, this has already happened because they're telling me for some, it's already unfolding, which means to me that there has already been this shift that is continuously happening right now. So if you have gotten out of a relationship that was toxic or very damaging, and now uh, you may find yourself in a connection or you may be dealing with someone um, that is overly giving or that is you cannot explain the type of connection that this is because it's healthy because it's a genuine connection and because it is very uh powerful for some of you guys your soulmates coming in so again um let go of the fears of feeling like you're not worthy of love or you're not worthy of the happily ever after or that you're not worthy of having a happy, fulfilled relationship with someone that understands you and accepts you wholly. Uh, why? Because my lovelies, they're telling you it's coming. It's coming if it's if it hasn't unfolded yet, it will be unfolding for you guys, okay? Um, for others of you, you may already find yourself in a relationship uh, and, and there is almost like this feeling of constantly fighting the good in that relationship because you're in fear or doubt that it may fall apart so what they're telling you is again um the highest message i'm getting here with this four of swords is we hold ourselves back based on our thought patterns based on what we constantly think about so in order to release yourself from this mental cycle that is very toxic you have to understand that the love that comes in and you allow to stay is the type of love that you have for yourself. What do I mean by that? If you genuinely care and love for yourself, then you're not going to allow any, any type of manipulation, any type of disrespect any type of whatever because you're aware of what you deserve and the moment you start acting based on what you are in your reality in the now in the understanding that's what's going to be reflected that this is the universe echoing back to you what it is that you believe to be true so the moment you let yourself go from feeling like and i'm going to be very honest with you guys i feel like for some of you guys it's almost like um, a feeling of like comparing yourself or often comparing yourself to other people's relationships, whether it's family members, whether it's your brothers, your sisters. Uh, it's always this feeling of like, do I not deserve it? Why is everyone like you're I'm not saying you're not happy for them, but sometimes it feels like it, it just never happens for you. And what they're telling you here is because you haven't allowed that to happen. So again, start treating yourself right by not allowing people to disrespect you or take advantage of you. Um, for those of you guys that are single or that are currently dealing with someone, this is going to get deeper, you guys. <laughs> this connection is going to get deeper for sure. Now, the partner's cards is the page of swords, the sun, and the five of pentacles. So it's a give and take here. It's uh, They were speaking about a soulmate type of union that is coming through. Page of Swords is an indication of communication. Someone that is coming through could be aggressive type of energy. Someone that knows exactly what they want. The Sun card, they're viewing you as the best thing that could happen to them or the best thing that ever happened to them. They're definitely wanting to take it to the next level. They're giving in. Um, their heart is completely open, which means to me, emotional availability. This is a person that is ready to open up. Five of Pentacles could be coming out of, again, you've been stuck in a situation or in a cycle when we're talking about love and romance where you don't see progress or you don't see things get better um be or 
you know, for some of you guys, it's relationships that just continuously keep falling apart. And the reason for it is because you vibrate from a fearful type of energy. Whereas for them, they're coming with the five of, or coming out of the five of pentacles, which is the feeling of um, being left. Uh, this could be a person that perhaps was in a committed relationship um, and they were either left or they walked away from them or they were the ones that, not them, but their partner was the one that walked away from them. So there is some t uh, childhood trauma with them in regards to abandonment issues. But again, this is the energy that is um, potentially uh coming out of so there is a lot of things that you guys may connect in regards to past relationships where there's almost this feeling almost like you guys have dated the same people um obviously the opposite sex or or same sex um but it's almost an energy of like having a lot of love when it comes to love specifically and relationships you guys have kind of mirrored each other's experiences. Um, and this is a beautiful thing. Why? Because they are talking about alignment here. So again, beautiful energy. All right, let's go now to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on with Cappies. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus in regards to love and romance. What are the messages for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus? Okay, here we go. First card here, Capricorn is the Sun card. Five of Pentacles, Three of Pentacles, Partner, Person of Interest, Two of Cups, Ace of Cups, Page of Swords. Wow, you guys have very similar cards to Sagittarius. So um, if you are dealing with the Sagittarian, definitely go uh, watch their video as it may be um, a message for you there. Um, Capricorn, these cards are exactly alike. The only difference is the three of pentacles here. Um, okay, so again, for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the Sagittarian energy or that may be the Sagittarian energy that's coming towards you or vice versa, okay? Okay, so what they're showing me here is, again, the Sun card is the representation of complete happiness, joy. Um, this is a very joyous moment in your life, or you will, you are preparing to go into this energy. Um, five of Pentacles is the fear of abandonment. So for some of you, you're feeling right now like you're dealing with a lot of emotional trauma that is coming up. Um, for some of you guys, this could be, and it could be by curiously too. So what I mean by that is it could be friends, people around you, or even the partner, your partner, um, that they may be dealing with something right now that it, it's almost bringing you like, uh, memories or thoughts about experiences that you've had in the past. Um, and, and the reason why they're surfacing is because, uh, the reason why these emotions are surfacing again, uh, Scorpio lunars eclipse that we just experienced. Um, it, it's the dark psyche um, that is being triggered. So anything we've been suppressing or anything that we still haven't healed from, we're being pushed to deal with it so that we can finally let go of that baggage of that burden of those past experiences so that you can rise like the Phoenix Capricorn so that you can be able uh, to be a much more healthier version of yourself and therefore become a much better lover to the person uh, that you're dealing with or to the person that's coming in for you. Now with the three of pentacles, this is exactly the energy that I was talking about with Sagittarian energy, um, which speaks about um, having a lot of similarities in, in relationships or experiences in relationships. Um, Three of Pentacles is working together. It's working as a group to heal and move on from past traumas. And again, I feel that this person that is coming in or the person that you may already be dealing with Capricorn, if there's been a recent connection, I want to say the past three months or so, um, you may find yourself feeling like you guys have a lot of things in common when we're talking about dating or dating experiences or relationships. Um, and the reason for this is because there is alignment and there is synchronicities that are happening. I feel like the universe is pushing you guys together um, to 
help each other heal, which is something that is very rare. I don't, I don't usually hear that. Um, from what I've been, you know, from what I've experienced, um, when we rely on other people to heal purposely, um, that, that could be a toxic trait, um, because no one can show you how to love yourself better than how you learn to love yourself. If you put that effort, I hope that makes sense. Um, but in this case, what they're telling me here is it's almost like the universe is bringing you guys together to put you guys together in harmony, to allow you guys to heal and allow, I even for some of you guys, especially those of you guys out there, Capricorns that have been a bit pessimistic about love or have been a bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a bit snotty when it comes to love and romance. I feel that the reason for that is because you've been taught or you've taught yourself that no one is going to take better care of yourself than yourself. And this to me speaks high volumes of uh, a person that is very self-sufficient. The bad thing about that is that because you're so used to having to protect and do for yourself, you often make other people, especially love partners or love interests, you often make them feel like they're worthless or like they cannot do anything that is go that you cannot do for yourself. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Um, so again, I feel that this connection, uh, both of you guys have very similar types of experiences or energies where past experiences, I mean, um, where the energy that is bringing you guys together is in perfect harmony and in synchronicity that the moment you guys are able to make that contact or the moment you guys are able to fully give yourself the opportunity, not be guarded, not be like thinking, you know, the worst is going to happen, not being pessimistic, but the moment you allow yourself to give yourself the opportunity, Capricorn, of connecting with someone new or with someone different other than from the person you've been stuck on for years, um, the moment you allow yourself and give yourself that opportunity, you're going to be blown away because love comes into your life because the person that is on a soul level connection is coming in or you may already be dealing with them, but, the, but this deepens that connection. And with the Two of Cups here and the Ace of Cups, if you can see in this deck, they are holding each other's hands and there is energy here, healing energy. It is your energy is filling their cup and their cup is filling your cup. Um, perfect balance and harmony. Ace of Cups. I mean, you guys, come on. And it's coming in rather quick for you guys. So whether you're ready or not, hang tight, Capricorn, especially those of you guys that are single. <laughs> All right, my lovelies. Let's go now to... Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius in regards to love and romance. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. What are the messages for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus? In regards to love and romance for the month of May, going into the month of June 2022. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. Aquarius, you have the Hermit, Seven of Wands, and the Knight of Wands. All right. Person of interest, Knight of Pentacles, Six of Swords, and the Star card. All right. So the Hermit is speaking to me very strongly about being in your comfort zone, about not being bothered or not wanting to be bothered. Seven of Wands, you're guarding yourself. You're extremely emotionally detached or not allowing yourself to connect. Um, Knight of Wands is at this point, there is a need for you to be able to embrace passion and give in to your passions. So what I'm hearing is for some of you guys, if you feel like you've been on this mission, right? Um, or on this cycle, uh, where things have been difficult in regards to love and romance, or things have been almost non-existent for some of you guys. 
what they're telling you here is you are your worst enemy because you are not allowing yourself to be the social um, outgoing uh, type of energy that you usually are and this has a lot to do with guarding your energy for some of you guys you are or have been experiencing a spiritual awakening um, for others of you, this could just indicate that you've been extremely guarded from the previous relationship you had. You closed yourself up. You're doing everything routine-like. Everything is like, it's a for sure thing Monday through Friday. You already know exactly what's going to happen and what you're going to do. What they're telling is you need to get out of that energy right now, Aquarius. It is important and crucial for you to embrace spontaneity type of energy, to put yourself out there, to take a different route um, to go to a different restaurant, to go to a different theater movie or whatever, um, do things different right now, from now all the way to June. Why? Because this is what's going to open you up to get momentum and to get the ball rolling when we're talking about love and romance. Now, for others of you, if you've been dealing with someone and there hasn't been any type of communication or any type of movement, um, or you've been waiting and hoping to hear from someone, they are definitely reaching out to you. I feel more than likely in the month of June, the mid of June, end of June, uh, there's going to be communication that opens up here, and there is a desire to uh, want to reconnect with you. But I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, if this person that you're waiting to hear communication from is an ex or someone that didn't work out in the past, don't waste your time with that. Listen to what they're telling you here. Be more spontaneous. Put yourself out there. Um, go on trips, even if it's a short trip. Um, it, the whole energy that they're giving to me right now is take on the energy of, of, of getting the ball rolling and when i mean that it usually indicates to me traction and traction to me <laughs> indicates going out of your comfort zone again like i said if there is a specific coffee shop that you always go to go to a different one if there is a restaurant that you always go to eat every saturday at the same time go to a different restaurant or go to a different uh, go t in a different time um the whole point here right now, what they're telling you is do things different, Aquarius, so that you can see different results. Stop being so guarded. Um, stop hiding away at, in your room or at your home. Or once you get off of work, it's like you completely shut down. You don't want to deal with no one. Put yourself out there. Not only for, not only to get excitement in your love life, but to re-energize your soul, to reinvigorate your energy to balance your energy because I feel you guys a little bit out of it right now um, and again it could be uh, this eclipse that's affecting everybody but uh, I want you to shake that energy out um, and and to you know like I said get the ball rolling get out of that stagnation um, or that feeling of wanting to just get away from the world um, especially those of you guys that have been going through a spiritual awakening what they're telling you is Yes, we all, you know, when you're on a spiritual path, we all experience different cycles in that spiritual awakening, but it is crucial and important for everyone. Even the most spiritual person will tell you it is crucial and important um, to connect to your spiritual side and to feed your spiritual soul. Um, but it is also crucial and important not to use that as a form of escapism, um, to escape the reality of your life. So again, yes, sometimes it's necessary for us to take a breather, for us to become uh, completely on, you know, with our solitude and to learn to be okay with that. But don't choose to remain in that energy because it's doing a disservice to yourself. Now, again, like I said, for those of you guys that are single, I do see love coming in for you guys. Um, and I feel like for a lot of you guys, this has been long in the making. For some of you guys, you've been single for over six years, over seven years, um, and it's been very, very like stagnant energy, and there's definitely a burst of energy that's coming through. You're able to move through and actually be able to see and connect with someone um, that is at this point in time, connect with someone that is to the same vibration as you. All right, my lovelies. All right. Now let's go to 
Pisces. Let's see what's going on for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love and romance. What is unfolding for Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising? Oh, all right, Pisces. I feel like they're giving you, they're speaking to your energy already. We have the Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Wands, and the Lover's card here. All right, we're going to pull out Partner, Person of Interest. We have the Ten of Wands, the Nine of Cups and the king of wands some of you guys may be dealing with a fire energy sagittarius leo libra um sorry not libra <laughs> sagittarius leo or aries um for some of you guys maybe uh libra it did come out um what they're showing me here is eight of pentacles wanting to put effort or energy or like you've been consuming yourself with work for some of you guys because you're trying to get away from the drama or you're trying to get away from having to deal with you know just almost this feeling of like uh, a roller coaster ups and downs type of thing and um I, again i feel like for a lot of you pisces you may be submerging yourself um at work because you've gotten to the point of understanding that there is certain things that you cannot change about your partner or that you're not if they're not willing to make that change you can't do that change for them um, so it's like I'm going to redirect my energy and focus primarily on what's working for me right now. And I feel like for a lot of you guys, uh, career and finances may be something that is taking center stage right now. Um, now with the lover's card here, again, it is about making a decision. So I feel like for some of you guys, you may be dealing with the situation of feeling like you're tired of putting the effort, you're tired of putting uh, energy towards something that is just not working. Um, another message that I am getting is for some of you guys, you may actually be dealing with two different people. Eight of Pentacles could be someone at work that you're connecting with, or that you may even feel like, uh, like a sexual type of connection, sexual chemistry going on there. Um, and I do see you guys being a, a little bit guarded and maybe feeling like, why am I feeling this type of way? Or why am I, why are they making me feel giddy if I am in a relationship and I don't even feel that for my partner no more? The reason for this, you guys, is because there is stagnation on both sides. It's like you guys have kind of just given up on um, the idea or the relationship or you've given up on uh, seducing one another. There is almost like this imbalance that's happening a lot of you guys may be dealing with a lot of miscommunication as well your partner ten of wands here with the nine of cups it's like they're tired they're burdened um they're no longer you know believing or thinking that uh, that they can chase this um or make this uh relationship like revive or charge it with new energy there's this feeling of I'm tired of putting in the effort or I'm tired for some of you guys it could be that you're dealing with a partner that is very absent um, whether it's on emotional level or whether it's that they're like physically they travel a lot they go back and forth they're not constant um, and there's this feeling of like when they get home they feel like you're overly emotional or like you're expecting too much from them because they're just tired and they just want to disconnect from the world type of energy so i feel like for a lot of you guys you guys are going through this transition of feeling like the passion has weathered in the relationship uh and the reason for it is because both of you guys have given up on each other or both of you guys have given up on keeping the romance alive so it's like you cannot blame them and they cannot blame you i just feel like you guys are uh you guys have just forgotten the reason why you guys fell in love with each other. Um, for others of you, like I said, I do feel like work right now is majorly influencing the connection of the person you're dealing with. Uh, so again, it could be that you're not really communicating with your partner because they are, they are absent or they're not as present. You're feeling this connection uh, with someone at work or someone that is around you that is connected to your finances where you feel like they're kind of sparking your interest or maybe even have thought about you know if they were to push through would i take it to that level uh type of energy and i feel the the reason for that is boredom boredom is what is affecting you guys's relationship or connection with the person that you're connecting with or have been connecting with um and i feel like you're having a wandering eye right now um 
because there is this need or desire for um, feeling intensity or feeling passion. I feel like for a lot of you guys from now all the way to July, be careful, you guys, because you guys are, if, especially those of you guys that are in a long-term relationship, I feel like you guys are going to be tempted. Why? Because there is this desire uh, that you're going to be experiencing, this desire for life, this craving for life, this crazy craving for passion. Um, and if you guys are not putting effort and your partner's not putting effort, uh, you're going to grow tired of it rather quickly. So my advice um, get yourself some nice wine, get yourself some sexy clothes, some beautiful <laughs> oils, uh, you know, just put effort in drawing back the energy of your partner or you, um, putting, or, or if you're a cross watcher, um, and you're watching this and this is the sign of your partner, uh, go out of your way to seduce them, remind them of why they fell in love with you. Passion is something that is very important. And I always tell my clients, it is 50% actions and emotional uh, presence. And the other 50% is passion, you guys. Um, uh, why? Because you cannot have, if you remove the element of passion or the element of physical connection, then you're only leaving the door open for the wandering eye or for temptation, point blank, period. So put the effort. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my lovelies, I hope you guys enjoyed these readings. Like, uh, comment, share, uh, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel, and we will see each other soon. Till then, bye.